Welcome back to another segment of Behind the Scenes of the Waltons. Today, I wrap up my conversation with Richard Thomas. Speaking of casting, I don't know how much you knew relative to the homecoming and then moving into the series and mm -hmm. those choices to, you know, the only the only family members who changed were, you know, Edgar Bergen to Will Gear, Patricia Neal to Michael, and then Andrew Duggan to Ralph. Um, did you know anything behind any of those choices or? I did know a little bit. And what I knew was that after the homecoming aired, William Paley, you know, who basically was the chairman, he was, he ran CBS. He was from the top. He was CBS. He said, we're going to make that, you know, Fred Silverman used to claim a lot of credit for turning that show into a series, but it was, it was William Paley who actually made the decision and said, we're doing that as a show. I, we're, and what, what I was told by several people was that he had said, you know, we've spent so many years drawing out of the well. This show was an opportunity for us to put something back in. How nice. The public. And he said, uh, and they were talking apparently about casting. And he said, well, do what you have to do, but make sure you have all the kids. Oh, all the young people. Aww. He said, the, the Paley said, just make sure you get all the kids. Uh, and that's the way it went. If only we I'd known, on... come negotiation time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, Pat Neal might have, <laughs> exactly. Pat Neal might have, might have done it if she had felt able. But I think what I remember, if I remember correctly, Pat said, you know, I, I'm because she had, this was the first show, wasn't it? The homecoming after she recovered from her stroke, I, I believe. Think so, yeah, I think so. So, so she, the, the, you know, the grueling and challenging nature of doing the show over nine months and every day and the hours and all that, I think it was more than she felt she could take on. But, but the fact that she made that decision really opened the door for Michael, who was in, in so many ways for a character that you were going to encounter every week over and over again, rather than the special, Michael's warmth and her accessibility. There were so many qualities about Michael that I think would have worked better on a weekly basis coming into your home that maybe someone is austere and the way, the way Pat, you know, the way Pat was. Um, such it was a great interesting. Actress. We oh, did a, um, a panel at the Smithsonian one year, um, a, a lot of the mm -hmm. cast, and Patricia Neal was there. And Michael right. said something to, this is what, this is what Michael relayed that she had, she had a conversation with Patricia and um, said, thank you so much for, you know, this has been such a gift. And, and, you know, I'm, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm, thank you for not doing it. And Pat said to her, I would have done it. They never asked. Really? That's, that's what she said that's at that point in time. Okay, so that's a different that's a different story, but I could see how the two stories could go together. Yeah. Um, you know, I could see how the how 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 one thing might have happened and then the other thing might have covered it. I don't know. I mean, we never this is the you know, this is Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I think it accrued to everyone's benefit that Michael I do too. that Michael was brought on to the series. Yeah. I really, and that takes nothing away from Pat's magnificent talent yeah. and she was a terrific lady too i loved working with her yeah um and funny so funny and and just delightful and it takes nothing away from pat that, that michael was probably was absolutely the right way to go for a, yeah. for a weekly performance and then will versus edgar or ralph i mean i think the casting for the series was perfect you know i think it I think it was perfect all the way down the road. Uh, you know, Andrew, basically, it was just that one scene, you know, Daddy coming home, which was terrific, and he was great in it. And and I, I believe that he was our father, and he was wonderful. I'm not sure. I wasn't really privy to what they were looking for in making those changes. Um, of course, Will was a thing unto himself and when they cast will they cast a whole 
whole flavor um uh, you know an incredibly lovable and wonderful the i think we i think what i got from these changes was more warmth mm. i mean will gear's warmth was just something else and as was ralph's deeply warm and present you know uh maybe that has more to do with the small screen versus the big screen i really don't know i don't i wasn't privy to those conversations mm -hmm. but i wouldn't have changed any of it i think it went exactly the right way but yeah. what i was told is that that william paley said just just get those kids keep that keep those kids together well, we are so grateful that he kept us all together. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, of course, you did five seasons and then you went bye-bye. So. I did like the infinite, <laughs> in the infinite wisdom of a 26-year-old, I decided it was time to move on. I don't regret it, but I do. But but I, it, 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 I, I look back and, and I think about those years that you all, you guys went on with the show and I wasn't there with some nostalgia thinking, oh, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't get to have that experience anymore. And it was such a good experience and it was such a wonderful life. But I did feel at that point in time that John Boy had really grown to a certain place age-wise and going to college and all that, that how much more could he have been that character? I mean, in other words, how much mm -hmm. more was there for me to bring and the other factor was i wanted to have time to do other stuff as everybody does after a certain point and i figured and i think maybe correctly and it was weird at my age to have that insight but i thought if i've done this show for five years it's going to take 10 years for people to start thinking about me in other way to accrue the amount of work that would balance the kind of influence that a series regular has. You know, you come into people's home week after week, year after year, and then you go out and you make a movie or a TV movie or a play. It takes a long time to gather a body of work that's going to balance that initial success. Um, and, you know, there are people, you know, who will, when they read my obit, obit in the New York Times, are going to only think of John Boy, and that's fine with me. <laughs> Yeah. Well, it was um, the last episode that we filmed together. I mean, I remember it just being really emotional. I don't know how it was for you. I mean, the last show, the last show that we that, that the, I did your that, last that I episode of season five. Yeah. When yeah. you John Boy goes off to New York and he's leaving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was rough. That was really, uh, uh, that was very rough. I got, and you know, I finished the show, I think I was also doing Merton in the Movies, if I'm not mistaken, or something at the Amundsen Theater right around that time. And I finished the show, it was very hard, it was really rough. It was very hard for me. I think it was hard for all of us. Um, and I went and I, I was doing that play at the Amundsen and then I went back to New York and I got so sick. I was so ill. I got the terrible flu and bug. I was, it was really bad. I, I got, I was very sick for a couple of weeks and I think it was unquestionably the, the, uh, the trauma of, of leaving the family. Mm. Um, I took two things with me. I took my parking sign <laughs> and I took, I had them give me the slate from my the last shot of my last scene, which happened to be a close up. Good night, John Boy. Good night, everybody. I love you. So I have that slate of my actually my last my last shot in the show, um, which is uh, very precious, and and it was rough. I mean, I hated I hated leaving. It was not. It was not a. Um, it was a decision that a part that part of me made in a kind of objective way, but actually experiencing it was not fun. I hated going. I hated saying goodbye to everybody. Mm. Um, it felt like something I had to do that would have been so much easier, and more profitable, and so much more comfortable to stay with everybody, and that would have been the easy way to go. Leaving was emotionally very hard, but there was a part of me that was going, nope, 
five years, it's been a success. You've done, this character is really now grown up into a man and has to go off and have his life. And this is the right way to finish. Um, so I have no regrets, but I, it was painful to leave. Oh, yeah. I mean, those sorts of goodbyes are so tough. I remember when we were at the airport, when we finished the homecoming and we the plane came back, you know, a little charter. And I thought, I was never going to see any of you again. And I was so that's distraught. Right. That's right. And that same thing there, you know, that that you can have that sense that, well, it's it's over and I'll never see so, you. And yeah. Thank well, goodness. But one of the beauties of it, of us, and I think this probably happens with actors who've been on a series together, although I know that it also doesn't happen. Uh, we've stayed a family. You know, we've remained a family. We had we had our our reunions, which were kind of peculiar, I thought, but um, but they were a chance to be together. That was the best thing about the reunions. They were a yeah. chance for us to be together, and 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 we kept all the things that made the show work in terms of the authentic um, intimacy, bonding, and love in the family. All those things that made the show work for people emotionally were things that we carried on afterwards. Um, so that was, if that had all been fake, we probably wouldn't have stayed connected. But because we really did connect, after the show was over, those connections were made because they were authentic and real. I mean, my heart leaps every time, you know, we get we get to be together. It's just, it's not like anything else. And um, it goes way back in all of our lives. And it's deeply precious. Yeah. I think we all feel that way too. Yeah. How did it feel for you then when they recast the role and brought, you know, I'm sure they asked you to come back and you were already, because you did, you did some yeah, guest spots that. and stuff. And then I well, felt like I Earl did, wanted I did the character some guest back. Spots. Yeah. I did some guest spots for a very specific reason. I didn't want anybody to get the wrong idea that I had left the show because I was somehow fed up or mm. that there was a problem or that it was, you know, that I had a bad attitude about it. I wanted, I wanted to come back for those two or three guest spots I did to just demonstrate that my commitment and my love and caring for the show was intact. That, uh, it, you know, because some people will leave a show because they don't get along with the co-star or because the, the producers want them to do something or because they want to go on and be a, become a movie star or because they went and they, and, they, and they sort of, well, that's over now. But I never wanted people to have that feeling. I wanted people to, I wanted to, to reestablish my commitment to the value of that show by staying as connected as I could. Now, I had worked with Bobby Whiteman uh, a few years before, we made a television movie together called No Other Love um, with Julie Kavner and me and, and him. And, and I had had a wonderful time working with him. I liked him personally very much, and he was terrific in the, in the picture we made. So I felt good about him doing the part. But it is very peculiar when somebody takes over your role. I mean, I, I remember when I did a play called Fifth of July when I had quite a success in it on Broadway in like 1980, Yeah, I saw you on it, and, in it. And then, and then not too many years ago at Signature Theater, they did a Lanford Wilson season and Robert Sean Leonard played my part in a revival of Fifth of July. And there was no way I could have played Kenny Talley again. There was no way that I could, have, but I still had that feeling when I read, and he was perfectly cast in it, I thought, ouch, that's my part. Somebody else is going to take away my the soul of my performance, and it'll be... But that's the nature of theater, as you know. Yeah. I mean, oh, how many Hamlets have there been, right? You can't... You don't own these roles in a funny kind of way. You can yeah. personify them and embody them, but you don't own them. Yeah, but you feel like you created them. I mean, that's been an interesting yeah, thing well, about... Did. The, yeah. the reunion. And that is the privilege. Yeah. That is the privilege of creating a role. Absolutely. Yeah. But to that degree, I think it always becomes, you know, rarely does a new incarnation of something. It, it's hard. We had all those years to establish those characters in the minds of the public that, as well. Yeah. That's exactly. And I felt for Robert, I thought, you know, I thought it's not going to be easy for him, you know, to 
have the bandages come off and here's a new actor playing this beloved character. You know, that's got to be a real, ch I don't, re I don't remember how many seasons he did. Did he do one or two or? Um, I think it was maybe or, one and a half or something, okay. you know, right. but he wasn't in every episode. Right. So, yeah. 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 They had to do what they had to do. And I certainly didn't have a problem with that. I thought, well, I, I left, I have no say in the matter. I have no right to have a feeling about it one way or the other. You know, that could yeah. be me. Yeah. Well, you certainly have gone on to have a very successful career. And I it's been my it's been fun for me to watch you in all sorts of different roles, both on on stage, which has been great to go see you on stage so many times. And if yeah, people, I love it when you come Yeah. And if people haven't seen you in To Kill a Mockingbird and they have a chance, they absolutely should because you are brilliant in it. And the show is fabulous. The entire ensemble is it's a wonderful company. so really, good. The ensemble is so good. Yeah. Well, thank you, G. Yeah. So I always cheer your successes and I'm always, you know, there's a certain proprietor. That's my brother. And isn't he wonderful? Well, of course. Absolutely. That's how I feel. I, it's completely mutual. Yeah. I mean, this is we. You know, we have we have cared for each other, all of us, for so long. You know, it's very it's very special. And of course, you have seven children in real life. How <laughs> well, you became the Waltons? <laughs> God, we recreated. Well, they say you do recreate your happy or unhappy childhood. <laughs> it just kind of worked out that way. You know, I mean, I had my first marriage. I had four kids. I had triplets, as, as you know, as well as my oldest son Richard. And then I, when I met Georgiana. She had her two wonderful daughters and we put them together. And then, of course, that was six, but not content with that. We had to make one of our own. I'm so glad we did because we have Montana, who's spectacular. And yeah. it just kind of came together that way, you yeah. know. Um, but yeah, seven and seven. Absolutely right. Yeah. And of course, Montana and my son, Devin, were born like just a few weeks apart. Just right? a few weeks apart. As we were doing that That's final a, reunion, yeah. the, the Easter yeah. Easter one. Yeah. It really is family. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Well, I know you have shows today, and I just... I do. Yes. I have my, so. this Finch act. Yeah, so you need <laughs> to switch up. back from John Boy Land, <laughs> Walton Land, right. to, you know, right. Finch Land. <laughs> right. So, I'm going to let you go, but I just, it's, it's always. So oh, I had a wonderful time. time, Judy. Thanks for, thanks for inviting me. This was absolutely great. And let's do it again. I would love that. And I know everybody is going to so love us, our little reunion here. And yes, I have so really makes me happy. Love you. Love you too, sweetheart. Take care. You too. I really want to thank Richard once again for taking time out of his tour schedule to spend this time with us here and talk the Waltons life, theater, acting, and all of that. It's been an absolute joy for me to have Richard join me. I will be back with more behind the scenes of the Waltons and more Ask Judy. Thanks for watching.